Have you ever wondered how a Bitcoin transaction is actually validated by the Bitcoin miners? In this video I will explain this by dissecting two Bitcoin transactions. The reason I'm making this video is because many people asked me to do a show on revocable sequence maturity contracts, which is basically the construction mechanism of a payment channel in the Lightning Network. And I really felt that people should have a really good understanding of what's happening deep down in a Bitcoin transaction. Therefore I'm doing this video kind of as a prequel. If you're interested in the Lightning Network and channel construction, you should really make sure to subscribe to my channel because this video is coming soon. Last week I sent over some milli Bitcoin to my lightning node and what I can do is I can copy the transaction and get the raw hex data of it and I pasted this here in my editor and now I can look at it. The first um, four bytes actually are the version number of the Bitcoin transaction and the next byte is the input counter so in this transaction I'm consuming one input um, and then I have 32 bytes which basically tell me which previous transaction is being consumed so this is the transaction outhash. The real issue here is that Bitcoin transactions always mixing up uh, little and big endian notations so basically I have to reverse every byte here in order to get the real transaction hash which I can find on the blockchain so I'm reversing all those bytes here and then there is a four byte following with the transaction out index so in this case it's the first output of the previous transaction and the next byte tells me the length of the script and the length of the script in this case is 6a so it's a hexadecimal number which means 6 times 16 plus 10 which is 106 bytes and this means I have to count 212 hexadecimal numbers and then I have another 4 byte for um, the sequence. After the input is being consumed I'm able to look at the output script. Before I want to look at the output script let's dissect the input script. So the first byte here tells me the length of the input script which is 47 which does not mean 47 bytes but again it's a hexadecimal number so in decimal this is 71 bytes or 142 characters which I again can count and this is the signature of my script. The other part will be 21 length and again calculating this to a decimal is 33 bytes which is 66 characters and this is going to be the public key. It's a hexadecimal number but we can look if this is really the Bitcoin address. We have to take the SHA-256 hash of the public key and then the RIPEMET 160 hash of it and we get this number. There is actually a tool that I'm linking in the description of the video that I'm also using later where you can see how to derive such a hash and then we need to extend this with a version number which in this case is 00 and then we need to calculate the checksum which is just um, two times the SHA-256 hash. We take the first four bytes as the checksum and we concatenate this to the extended pub key and um, once we have this we encode everything in base 58 which is the encoding format and well we see this is the Bitcoin address. If you look up this Bitcoin address on the block explorer you will see that there is actually a transaction um, being spent. Um, the transaction that was being spent from this address is the one that we calculated before so let's look this up on the block explorer. Here you can see it. It's actually uh, transferring um, 0.25 milli Bitcoin to me and if we look at the advanced details and the API calls we see that there is another transaction that was being used to send over this data to me. So this other transaction we're going to dissect again with the same mechanisms because we're interested in the output script. So I'm speeding this up a little bit, um, ignoring basically the input part, but now look at the output scripts which at this time were unspent. The first thing we see is the 02 which means we have two outputs. The next 8 bytes are the representation of the amount that is being sent and again we need to reverse all the bytes in order to have the correct representation. So we have um, 61A8 and if we convert this from hex to decimal this is 25,000 satoshis. Then we see 19 which is um, the length of the next data field so 25 bytes or 50 digits and 
now we can look at this uh, data field. So it's not the data field, but it's the, the output script actually. So we see the 7.6 uh, corresponds to op dub, uh, and then a9 corresponds to op hash 160, and then we see a 14, which means 20 bytes length, so 40 digits, which is the pub key. And um, then we see the 88, which is op equal verify, and the AC, which is op check signature. We can do the same for the second output, which is not particularly different or interesting in comparison to the first one. But we see there is a change being sent to the change address. So now what we do is we take the input script, we remove all the metadata that we put there, and then we copy over the output script of the previous transaction because this is really how the validation takes place. You take an unspent Bitcoin transaction, take the output script, which was the one that we just dissected, and you concatenate this with the input script of the next transaction that you're going to do. This script has to evaluate to true. There is this tool on the internet where you can basically copy over such a script and check if it evaluates true. So let's do this here. And when I execute this, I see that the execution fails. What? How can this be? This is impossible. We dissected the script perfectly. But if we look closely, you see I did one slight mistake at the very end. I copied the output script of the change address, which of course I cannot spend because I don't have the um, proper signature for my input script. So I have to exchange the public key uh, with the output one, which was the output that was sent to me. And if I do this also on the side, then we can see that the evaluation actually is true. In the description of the video, you will find more links about the tools that we used and also the link to the Bitcoin transaction. I will be very happy if you leave a comment and give me some feedback of which videos you liked or disliked or what I could do better. I hope to see you back next week and until then, happy lightning hacking!